Hello, and welcome to Weed and Grub. Day two of WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Did you see Snoop yesterday as we are recording this on a Monday? It was all over everywhere I turned last night when I like picked up my phone, my phone, like Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. That guy, I, d- I don't even know what happened. I, could you talk me through it? Because I, I like I don't follow wrestling, but I know that Snoop like got into the ring and like did a crazy wrestling move. He saved Day two of WrestleMania. What he happened? saved it. What happened? Okay. Uh, I will give background quickly because <laughs> I want to get to the video so fast. Okay. The background is um, WrestleMania was this past Saturday and Sunday here in Los Angeles. Hollywood WrestleMania. Massive main events. Both nights, Snoop Dogg came out at the beginning, had these interstitials running through it. He came out with Rey Mysterio on the first night in a low rider. Legend. He comes out on the second night with a guy named The Miz, who I will just say is... One of my favorite guys. I love The Miz. Special surprise guest, Shane McMahon of the McMahon family. Vince McMahon. Yeah. Okay. Shane McMahon comes in. We haven't seen him for a long time. He and The Miz have a massive rivalry that's been going on all year. Shane gets into the ring. He's dancing. He's shuffling. And Snoop Dogg's in there and he's like, I promised a surprise match today. I promised a surprise match between The Miz and Shane McMahon. Let's go. Bell rings. Snoop hops out of the ring. So much adrenaline is pumping through Shane McMahon, and I don't think it's on the video we have, but he um, throws the Miz into the ropes. Miz does a leapfrog over him. There's a lot of just like fun acrobatic moves, but in the middle of it, Shane twists, his ankle gives, and he tore his quad. Yeah! And at first, I thought it was a fake injury to lead to more surprises. Right. But you run it back a couple times. Yeah. He really hurt himself. So a Shane, torn quad. That's no. Oh, my God. I can't imagine the pain. So the Shane pain. McMahon is on the ground grabbing his leg. Nobody knows if it's real or fake. The Miz is holding his adrenaline. He has an angry face on. He's going around the ring, holding it together, but behind the eyes. What's going on? What happens? Mm-hmm. And Snoop, in the middle of all of this chaos, improvises and saves the day. That's- I know nothing about wrestling, and that was so thrilling to watch. Improvising like that, that like he just, that, it's so amazing that he pulled it off. There's this wonderful moment in between Snoop coming in the ring and Shane McMahon being hurt, where you hear Snoop on the mic being like, I promised this crowd a fight. I promised this crowd a fight. Drops the mic, sucker punches the Miz, does what we just saw, and that clip cuts off. But then the beauty of it, too, props to the Miz, takes the sucker punch, drops, flails, protects himself on the people's elbow, and mm-hmm. then Snoop wraps his leg and a ref comes in and counts to three <laughs> and does the pin. Uh-huh. And Snoop's the freaking hero. It's He's the greatest stoner alive. Of all time. Of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. It's unreal. This is the best. It's, I, I would have given anything to be there. <laughs> Watching him run to the ropes Mm -hmm. with those tiny little steps and then like kind of leap over the Miz and do a couple more tiny little steps. Yeah. It's so obvious that the dude is a wrestling fan. Yes. One, because he knows a finishing move from The Rock. (laughs) Two, he's such a consummate performer that he does like all this stuff to bring the crowd in silently before he whips his sunglasses out and throws them into the crowd, which gets the biggest pop in the world. Like, masterful he is for me on the on a level with keanu reeves in john wick because we were talking about how keanu reeves is like the barishnikov of action movies right now snoop is like at a similar level like just completely in control of his body and his audience in a really exciting way like that's so dope so dope man someday we'll have him on the pod right mike we absolutely will. we got a dream we gotta we'll keep dreaming that'll be that'll be our final episode we'll be we'll be like we're done and we're done yeah <laughs> that is he people elbowed the pod yeah a hundred percent yeah that'll be like uh when Connor Ratliff, Dead Eyes, got Tom Hanks, and he was like, and now we can rap? Little Snoop Dogg is when Weed and Grub will end. <laughs> That's going to be phenomenal. I cannot wait. So oh. um, it's just all I've been talking about. I've been on, I was on a fun text group text all WrestleMania weekend with uh, Eddie Firth, Eric Wilson, all the homies, and we're yeah. just talking shit, getting upset about how outcomes happen. But boy, oh boy, we all came together when Snoop Dogg saved the day. Hell yes. What up, Mary Jane? How's it going, Mike? So 
So good. What an amazing weekend. Welcome to Weed and Grub, everyone. This is a podcast about comedy, cannabis, cooking, culture, calling shit out, and the goat of all time, Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg. Do I have to say goat of all time? Does that even make sense? Greatest of all time, all time. Yeah. ATM machine <laughs> a machine. Little redundant, redundant. <laughs> a little redundancy, redund redundancy. <laughs> the goat of all time. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, Man, I'm allowed. I'm allowed it, to make mistakes on my own podcast. It also sets up what could be some fantastic like future Snoop Dogg like cameos oh because yes. you know it's one thing for him to stand on stage with a mic and get the crowd hyped dude was born to do that dude has so many hits that you know it's gonna be legends on legends for the rest of his life forever but now if he could be like some wrestler's manager where he's sitting on the sidelines the whole time and he slides some brass knuckles into like, you know, a heel or he comes in and like put somebody in a sleeper hold and then like he's hitting a blunt while putting them to sleep oh, with man. a chokehold. Do you so know what good. I'm saying? I do. I do. I just love how he has totally infused himself into every aspect of popular culture. Like he's selling Bic lighters with Martha Stewart and he's running his weed empire and he's playing his fucking music at the Super Bowl and he's here at WrestleMania. He's like, what can't he do? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, speaking of celebrations, uh, the day this episode drops is your birthday. Happy birthday, Mary Jane. Thank you. It is my birthday today, the day this episode drops. Thank you very much, Mike. That's very exciting. Thank you. We are both um, the deepest of Aries. Oh my God. Yes. Like classic, stubborn, furious half of the time, deeply loyal, a lot of fun. Um We'll yeah. cut you out immediately if needed. <laughs> yeah, I think you might even have me beat on that one, but we're both pretty we're pretty yeah. up there with that. Yeah, yeah, if we had like video game stat lines where it's like stamina <laughs> aggressive, cut you out of your cut cut you out of my life forever. <laughs> like, yeah, my stat would be, you know, 10x to your 3x. Yeah, we gotta even compete about being Aries. That's how Aries we are. <laughs> like who's more of an Aries here? Producer Mark is an Aries too, man. This is a whole Aries studio. Mark is a different breed of Aries a lot than of us. Fire. Well, Mark just has it on lock better than we do, but he burns hot yeah. underneath, deep down. Yeah. You well, can see it. <laughs> it's true. He's just got the steel doors to contain the fire. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have that as mm -hmm. well as much. What's what's uh, how, how have birthdays been for you? How do you like having a birthday I at all? I love a birthday. I have always loved my birthday. It's usually around Easter and or spring break. So it's usually like kind of like a fun festive time. People are usually like, you know, excited that the weather is getting a little better. Growing up in Newfoundland, it was always my dad said the crocuses would come out for my birthday, which are those beautiful little flowers. So it was like the first signs of spring generally. Um, I've always enjoyed my birthday. My greatest birthday of all time was my 33rd birthday when a group of friends took me to Atlantic City. I think there were 10 or 12 of us. We all piled into a van. We drove from New York down to Atlantic City and we all got super dressed up and went to this casino on mushrooms and just like ran around and played blackjack and roulette and like went go-karting. And it was just like one of the most magical times of my life. I remember like running around screaming um, that song, Final Countdown, <laughs> just like with all of my friends, just like living life to the absolute max. So I've had some really good birthday celebrations. My 40th was at Big Sur with my sister. That was beautiful. Um, this one, I'm just kind of like chill. I think, I think when this drops, I'll probably be on a beach in Malibu, hopefully. Very nice. Yeah. Also still with mushrooms? Yeah, definitely. Some light, some light little, you know, daytime mushrooms. And then, um, I want to play, will you play pinball with me? I will. Ooh, I almost, I'm such an, I almost said I will beat you at pinball wow. instead of celebrate On your my birthday. birthday. <laughs> Jesus. As it came out of my mouth, I know I still said it, but I stopped myself from saying it the way I would have said it. Nice. Yeah, which is like, I will destroy you on your birthday at pinball. Great. Actually, you won't because I'm a pinball wizard. I'm so good at Elvira. I'm so good at Simpsons. I'm so good at there's an X-Files one I've played that I'm very yeah, good at pinball. Yeah, but you've played with me and you know that I'm a better pinball player than you are. <laughs> It's my birthday. You have to say yes. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing about my pinball versus your pinball. I am. I have never gotten into the zone where yeah. I am like hitting it ramps over and over, going through the circuits over and over. I can get like big jackpot wins on like my third ball that'll put me over that hundred million hump. And then you hear that satisfying pop. Absolutely. And then I might win like one of those like the number needs to be 50 and you get an extra ball 50 mm -hmm. on 50. So I've had good short term big pop runs. I have seen you. I can keep that ball going for like half an hour. I swear to God. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I would say 
you are so much more consistent. I might just have like a couple of lucky breaks at the end of the day. Well, I think we're going to have a great time together um, competing and trying to outdo each other. Big pinball questions for you. One, okay. do you like the flippers uh, about halfway up the ramp? Yes. You do like that? Love the extra flipper. Okay. Any game that only has the two flippers at the bottom is like a subpar game, in my opinion. Agreed. I mean, some of the really good old ones are that style. But yeah, I like the extra flippy doos. And I love like intricate, lots and lots and lots of ramps. Got to have the ramps happening. And I also really love the, like one of my favorite oldie oldies that I used to play at the Games Arcade in St. John's, Newfoundland all the time was Pinbot. Did you ever play Pinbot? I haven't heard of it. It's a really old one, but it's like you have to like light everything up to open a bunch of shit up and then you have to like fill those holes with balls and then you get these like crazy multi balls and I oh. oh, love a multi ball. You know what the thing is about pinball is that it's like so exciting and soothing at the same time because like you get the adrenaline of having a great time, but also your mind can't go anywhere else. It just has to be focused on the pinball. So it's sort of meditative. I was just talking about this with um, our friend Elise mm. the other day because she was saying how much she loves getting high and playing pinball. It's just like it's the most calming thing I, I can think of as a game of pinball. Except. What? The other thing that you're much better at than me at pinball. Oh. You're a tilt totaler. You, you what will, do you mean? You will ride that very thin line between oh, yeah. tilt and not tilt to get that ball still in play. Oh, I will shove a hip into that machine and like lift it off the ground a couple of inches for sure. Tilt warning. I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> I, I, until... And I grew up in the 80s. Like, you know, <laughs> we used to like hit our games really hard. This is like before it was all like, you know, fancy electronics. Like you would go to the games arcade and like beat shit up. It was great. <laughs> I got so nervous. The first time we played pinball together was in Alaska at Coots. Oh. And I remember like I uh, I was pretty buzzed. And I remember I went first mm -hmm. and I, I kind of like quickly lost. And then I just sat in the cut with you, but you were shoving the machine. And I was like, we're going to get kicked out of here. Mary Jane, you I can't. Kicked out from Coots, the <laughs> legendary dive bar where they've got like underwear hanging from the ceiling. I don't think so. <laughs> you just, the way that you play, it was very aggressive. I was, and, and I was like, yeah, she's not scared of a tilt warning at all. Like Yo. until that, until that game crashes, you are going to um, play to win that game that time of my life when I learned how to play pinball was the same time of my life where I was playing water polo and we were talking about this on a re recent episode where like I had to be physically aggressive with the guys because they were physically aggressive with me so often I would go to the games arcade and take out some of that physical aggression on the pinball machines like that was definitely a way that I worked it out that's awesome i hope everyone <laughs> listening is picturing you in like season six of stranger things <laughs> as that like guest cameo where everyone's crowded around like who is she what's going on <laughs> she seems so mad <laughs> <laughs> i was <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to be so great. Yeah. I um I also I I also wanted to ask you on um, your birthday. Mm -hmm. Cupcake, slice of cake, whole cake with candles? Mm, maybe pie, honestly. Pie. Like some key lime pie or some lemon meringue pie. Mark is furious. Or some <laughs> <laughs> Mark, that's such a disappointed face. I love pie. I'm not a huge cake fan unless maybe it were like something like a, I'm like weird with cake. I want like olive oil cake or carrot cake. I don't want like the, wow. Mark is like leaning back and rubbing his stomach. Like he's so disappointed. Okay. I'd love cake. <laughs> Don't no, change I don't know. your birthday choices for <laughs> Yeah, Mark, I'll give you a cake for your birthday. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say like maybe some pie or pie. maybe some uh what do we have at uh Chispaca? What was that dessert that um that crazy fucking dessert? Budino, which is like smoked butterscotch caramel like whipped a, cream situation. Like kind of like a pudding. Yeah, burnt not so much smoked, that's the wrong term. Burnt. Yeah. Burnt that's butterscotch. That's kind of what I want. I want more pudding pudding and pie rather than cake. But depending on where we end up, I mean, you know, I'll just stick a candle in anything so I can blow it out. <laughs> <laughs> stick oh, a candle man. in anything so I can blow it out. Yeah. It's interesting. I'm starting to really like draw like subtextual parallels in your birthday. You like to beat up pinball machines. Mm -hmm. You like super tart cakes yes. or pies i like intense You're intense. intense things i like and i really do i like and i'm not i'm not into comfort you know mm -hmm. i like i like feeling a little pain at all times even when it's pleasurable pleasurable so if i get you um like some kind of gift card to an snm dungeon for your birthday maybe i would totally check out an snm dungeon i've never done that kind of thing and i honestly like there were a few parties that i went to back in the days when i was going to like burning man parties that were very like super polyamorous and everyone would show up 
in crazy outfits and like spank the shit out of each other. I ended up at a couple of those parties where I got spanked with a um a paddle. Like a wooden frat paddle? Yeah. There yeah. was a, one where I got spanked with a paddle that had a heart cut out in the wooden paddle. And so it would leave heart shaped welts. <laughs> cool. And it was kind of interesting, but I didn't, I'm not really into getting spanked at parties and like, that's not my thing. And the dungeon thing. I Wait, think hold on. Like, I have a question. Is I, it, is it the public or the spanking that was like taking away from, or were they both not for you? I think they're both not for me. Although I am interested in exploring boundaries in general but that part is the, the public part yeah yeah like i think that the pain boundary is something that is kind of interesting um for me but yeah i just don't i don't want people to i don't know i'm not a voyeur and i, I don't want to be looked at that's not my thing but uh, same i'm a solo solo person or a solo or with one partner in my house so the snm <laughs> so the snm dungeon be you and a dominatrix of some kind in yeah. a safe setting with a bunch of different types of things to explore i guess so i mean that doesn't really feel like something i would want to do but i mean if someone gave me it's a non gift certificate, okay. i know i was gonna say if you gave me a gift certificate to that i'd be like interesting like what what is this like what does this look like maybe i'd learn something about myself that i just had no idea like oh i love being tied down and tickled or whatever the hell oh, yeah. it is you okay, know cool. i definitely don't want that okay well i can't Sounds go like back nightmare. to bella the leather queen and be like hey i need that money back this didn't go <laughs> as i floated it on the pod and now uh we got to figure something else out can i get that yeah cash back is that what you're giving me for my birthday is it not SNL? anymore okay <laughs> <laughs> awesome what what do you think about like a we work dungeon like i'm you know how like we work um crash nothing 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 good is working out right now like okay um so what do you think about like instead of like a pizza hut kfc or a taco bell kfc mm -hmm. like a we work snm dungeon or mm. some kind of like dog daycare um i have no daycare. idea what you're getting at i'm just trying to think of like new combinations that could work out in this like weird economy that we're in oh i don't know oh how a we work dungeon what yeah. would that look like like you know a little work and a little bit of play so like you would get all your emails done you would do your writing and then on your lunch break you would go into the basement uh -huh. and get stepped on okay with like battery cables on your nipples and then go back up and uh, uh there's get back to work definitely someone in the world who really wants that for yeah, sure right i feel like it's probably already in berlin but i'm just spitballing for here in the states elon musk probably wants that you know what i mean Ugh. he'll he'll set that shit up elon that motherfucker right now did you see did you see Bill Oakley's tweet? No. That so okay, it's a little convoluted, but basically Elon Musk had a little hissy fit because, you know, the New York Times is critical of him. And so he pulled their blue check mark. He had said that he was going to leave some news outlets as verified um news outlets with the blue check. Like the LA Times still has its blue check mark, for instance, but he pulled the New York Times blue check mark. He's been tweeting like poop emojis and saying like all of their stuff is just like diarrhea and shit and everything. So the second that they no longer had their blue check mark. Bill Oakley, genius, listen to our episode with Bill Oakley, former showrunner for The Simpsons, hopped on the opportunity, changed his banner to the New York Times. And he, so it looked exactly like it. It was like the New York Times with a blue check mark. And then he wrote this tweet that I got to pull it up. Hang on a second. It was so funny. He said basically um, that they had done a, uh, hang on a second. As the New York, he's tweeting as the New York Times. Yes. Im imposturing them. It says, the New York Times, a new study confirms that despite the claims of many, mayonnaise is delicious and those who disagree are radically incorrect. More details of this six-month MIT investigation at steamedhamsociety.com, which is his site, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and the internet went wild that's amazing uh it was amazing and since then i think he's been uh admonished because now he's like his header looks different and he doesn't have an avatar and stuff so maybe he's in trouble over this i don't know he can't you can't be in trouble for he wrote doing another thing anymore later that said myt exclusive is every trending topic on twitter a conglomeration of right-wing morons no but 85 percent are <laughs> full story at <laughs> it's just such a fucking genius okay that's incredible so good i could also because i have truly fallen out of favor with the new york times see those as headings that would be like above the fold at this point yeah i like the way you say you've fallen out of favor with the new york times like like they were covering you and now they're not covering you anymore 
They used to write about me. They but used to write about me. <laughs> you mean you don't you don't like the times? Man, I no, I don't. Yeah, they kind of suck, right? They, they do suck. Like yeah. I don't care about Elon. I don't care about Twitter even. I mm-hmm. feel like it's one of those things like the more we ignore it, the sooner it goes away. Yeah. Like any bully. Um, but I'm also bummed that this like place that I thought was liberal go- liberal was, like, good and information oh yeah their trans not... coverage has been heinous they're yeah. like fear-mongering they're it's a really weird time for like so i've always put a lot of faith into mainstream media organizations i think blind faith honestly and truly since donald trump's election i obviously the scales have fallen from most of our eyes i think and we can truly see that you know everything is biased coverage there's very little that is like purely just fact-based investigative journalism that's happening and like the whole fucking thing with leslie Stahl in 60 minutes having marjorie taylor green on her show and not pushing back against like there was this whole thing that's also breaking the internet about how marjorie taylor green says something about um sandy hook no it's about pedophiles about pedophiles. biden being a pedophile and a groomer and leslie Stahl's like what do you mean? And she says something about, you know, like Democrats groom children and, you know, they sexualize children and that's what's going on. And Leslie Stahl just literally goes, okay. And kind of rolls her eyes and doesn't push back on it at all. And it's just so upsetting because, you know, these are the people that we're trusting to do the thing, to to push back and to, to bring us what's true and what we really need to be paying attention to. And, um, you know, like we've talked about this on here, the fact that we know more about Andrew fucking Tate than we do about the ozone layer. <laughs> right. So, yeah, it's upsetting. I still have a subscription to The Times and to a bunch of other papers. And I, tr- I try and like ingest as much news coverage as I can from different places so I can sort of form my own opinion. But it's, you know, it's so cool right now to be in school um, in this program at UVM and be really forced to, one, be a critical thinker. Don't believe everything you read. You absolutely, you have to think very critically about it. And two, you have to cite every single source using a very specific citation style that is, you know, you can't just like p- paste in a web link and be like, here you go. Right. And um, it's 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 great to be forced to remember how to be rigorous. You know, that is really nice. And I think it's cool that the last New York Times article I agreed with is that mayo is fantastic. (laughs) Mayo is delicious. It's incredible. It's the mayo for me. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't like mayonnaise, you're probably one of those people who's like, here's the word moist. And you're like, oh, the word moist. Or you're like, clowns actually scare me. Shut up. I know. Mayo rocks. Clowns are fine. (laughs) Moist is just a word. (laughs) Hilarious. I Yes, I love mayo. I put it all over everything. I make my own sometimes. I've been making my own almond milk again lately. See. Also, just for a little virtue point there. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> See my glow? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Who doesn't like... I can understand if you don't like mayo as like a too much of a glop. Jordan doesn't like mayo. Our friend Jordan. On, on, as a flavor profile, I think it absolutely is a glue to hold over uh, anything together and it is an absolute perfect base for any kind of aioli fold in whether it's a garlic or a chipotle or anything else it is the perfect condiment baseline there is no other condiment baseline as rigorously delicious and utilitarian as mayonnaise agreed thank you i have no pushback neither do i cite your sources though bill oakley <laughs> nice <laughs> steamdams.com he knows where off he speaks yes yeah 100 percent. i actually the other day while i was watching wrestlemania i'll just shout it out real quick my um parents got me a hundred dollar gift certificate to grubhub whoa and so i was like "Ooh, i'm gonna have a nice little solo weekend for myself and order a bunch of um restaurants to delivery for grubhub yeah and i got the first night of wrestlemania i got denny's which i hadn't had in so long and i love denny's i can't imagine that you can get denny's delivered in los angeles it was really fun where is a denny's even there's one on sunset right across from that big theater whose name i can't remember where the what on the Gower. Gower? Okay. Yeah. It's a it's a beautiful Denny's. Oh, that's right. I actually do in know Gower where that is. It's near an Arby's. Yes. Yes. Um, so my first night I got the um Denny's sampler platter, okay. which is onion rings, mozzarella sticks, mm-hmm. fries, and buffalo chicken, boneless buffalo chicken tenders. How did it travel? Incredible. Really? Because it was only from that place to my place. Right. Very reasonable. And your address is? And the package uh, 13 marks like, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. Don't no. do it. Don't do it. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> I don't want to get into that. <laughs> no. Too many people know my address from my comedy Absolutely. store show. Um, but it traveled great. But also the plastic, they poked holes in the plastic to let the steam out. 
Crucial. So the fries traveled well Great. in a way I didn't expect. Yep. All of this is to lead back to my sauces. Okay. This is going to be very long, but I'm apologizing now. Oh, okay. I also got, in addition to the sampler, I got a um, spicy barbecue buffalo burger with seasoned fries from um, Denny's. Okay. And so I, I had the appetizer thing, fell asleep during one of the matches, woke back up in time for the main event, saw the main event, went to the comedy store, got drunk, came back home, watched a lot of reaction videos to WrestleMania and ate that buffalo burger, mm -hmm. added mayonnaise to it. And it was fucking spectacular. The mayonnaise held the lettuce and the tomato and everything in there because the barbecue sauce was too slidey mm -hmm. and jalapenos were too slidey. So I added mayonnaise to both sides. I was also very stoned and a uh -huh. little drunk and it <laughs> hit the spot. And then the mayonnaise barbecue mixture dripping down from the burger onto the plate to swipe the fries through uh -huh. couldn't be beat. I think mayonnaise... It, it just You're saying it mayonnaise all. so many times the the whole word is like it's not making sense in my ears anymore. The like you just said mayonnaise for the sixteenth time and I was like just focusing on the oh, word. Okay. Mayonnaise. So and then here's the second part of it. Mayo uh, is that for day two, I ordered myself California Pizza Kitchen to be delivered. How is there mayonnaise in that food? Because I one I ordered their um, spinach artichoke dip with chips. Oh. It was really good. I hadn't had spinach spinach artichoke dip mm -hmm. in so long. And mayonnaise is a critical component of that. 100% with Parmesan cheese. Yeah. Ooh, it was so good. Traveled well again. But I also tried the um, bacon club pizza. Jesus, from... dude. You had like 18,000 calories this weekend. Yeah. Remember when we didn't talk much? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's because I was in a coma on my couch watching Recovering wrestling. Recovering from your comedy <laughs> album taping, which we have to talk about. Oh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, but the it's this is one of the best pizzas I've ever had in my life. And mayonnaise is a big part of that. Mayonnaise. Mayonnaise. <laughs> For mayonnaise. anyone who doesn't like mayonnaise, they're still sure not going to like listening to this. I don't care. What it, I, I stand on. by it. So the it's just a pizza base with a chicken, a uh, couple different cheeses, bacon, just a normal like bacon ch chicken pizza. Nope. I know, but chick I know you think chicken is overrated. I, and chicken I normally does not agree belong with on you. a pizza. I do. I agree, except for in this instance, it really worked out. But I agree. Okay. I agree. All right. I'll put my bias aside. Also, CPK is they invented the CPK. the um, barbecue chicken pizza. They're the inventors of it. Well, with fuck the, that with place the... then. They've, <laughs> that's, they've unleashed a fucking plague upon our society. Chicken has no place on a pizza, barbecue or not. It changed with mayonnaise. This it is changed insane. American culture. The barbecue chicken pizza created by CPK changed the American pizza culture forever. Ugh, I'm so against it. Parmigiani, if you're listening, I only fuck with the kind of pizza that you make. Uh, anyone who loves pizza does not like this kind of pizza. So this pizza <laughs> kind of sucked, except that on top of it, it's a bacon chicken club pizza. So separately, they send a bunch of mixed greens lettuce okay. and a bunch of thinly sliced tomatoes. And you put that on top of the pizza. And then there's a lemon aioli dressing Jesus that goes on top of that. So I'm building all of it. And I drizzled this lemon mayo aioli dressing over the top. And that mayonnaise held the lettuce down so that you could lift up each slice. Ugh. And it was like a sharp tangy snap from the lemon the greens made it feel like i'm eating salad there's bacon underneath there and a bunch of cheese jesus christ man it was incredible have you pooped hmm? have you pooped no <laughs> no you're gonna be like a sloth i just learned this sloths poop once a week and when they poop it's one third of their body weight and that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be you yeah in like four days time you're gonna show up looking all dewy and you'll be like ah, ah, ah. you come in i'm hanging from my shower curtain yeah. like help <laughs> It's just like <laughs> thunk. <laughs> Good Lord, Mike. Well, the people underneath me are like, did he drop a bowling ball? What is going on up there? His WrestleMania poop finally just <laughs> dropped. Good Lord. I didn't expect to do 10 minutes on mayonnaise and my meals, but I really, it was really fun. It was energizing and no, I have not pooped yet. Wow. Yeah. That, that is fun. Yeah. Well, speaking of decadent things, I wanted to talk about this cool um, thing that I got in the mail about the, um, it's there. there's a company in Oklahoma that is going to be making the largest edible ever for 420. I think we have video of it um, that they emailed to me as well. Happy yeah. birthday. There's your picture. Oh, there's my birthday picture. That's me blowing weed kisses. That's nice. I like that picture. And next is the video, I believe. And then, okay, so here's the video. So Zen Cannabis 
is an Oklahoma company, and they are making this um, enormous edible for the uh, 420 holiday. Um, the 420 pound treat will take 12 40 gallon vats of milk chocolate and 100 pounds of cannabis flour to make with the nine by four feet bar packing a potency of 4 million. 200,000 milligrams of THC. 4 million milligrams of THC? 4 million 200,000 milligrams. That's according to this press release. I mean, obviously this is, they say so. <laughs> so I'm not there to uh, lab test it or potency check it, but um, that's kind of like a fun a fun thing to do is make that. history with like a Guinness book, Guinness World Book of Records. How do you say it? Guinness Book of World Records? Yeah. Um, sorry, my brain just did a little twisty because it's still thinking about mayonnaise. <laughs> um, I think it's neat. I think it's fun. I like the biggest ever kind of things all the time i love the biggest ever of you know? anything like cows made out of butter all that kind of stuff i think it's fun absolutely with with something like this where are they making that is it going to be in oklahoma yeah it's in oklahoma city oklahoma zen cannabis in the zen canna factory uh, and they're super excited about it so i wonder what they're going to do with it afterwards i mean i hope they like break it up and give it to dogs give it <laughs> do no that would kill them <laughs> dogs are allergic to chocolate you want to kill dogs? No. Well, what? That's their suggestion. I didn't suggest you that. You said that. Th I thought Mike I read it. Mike wants to kill dogs. I thought I read it. Nope. Dogs are can't have chocolate or weed, dude. The one time Mr. Moo, who's snoozing on the couch here between us, ate a ball of hash. It was just such an uncomfortable yeah. night for him. He I would was, never wish that on any animal. Oh, poor little guy. He didn't like it at all. I'd be. I bet if you gave a crow weed, I bet it would become three times as smart and probably like write I don't a think book. they're going to give it to animals. I think they will hopefully break it up and give it to medical patients. Oh, that would be fantastic. I get anxious when you talk about giving weed to animals. I don't most animals aren't smart enough to handle weed. Well, and I really hate it when people post like, "Oh, I got my dog high" or you know, all that kind of like it just bums me out because it's yeah. like Ugh, it really doesn't help our cause of, you know, wanting to like destigmatize and normalize cannabis use and not be like a fucking idiot. So, yeah. I've been I've seen like so that. many videos Actually, I don't even want to give them any more play. Sure. Let's move on from that. But the idea of giving all of those all of those milligrams to medical patients in Oklahoma is such a great idea. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, much better than mine. Um, I think it's neat. It's going to be the total bar weight is supposedly going to be 420 pounds. Um, total hours to make 360. They've got all these cute factoids on here. They mailed me this um, non-medicated sample to celebrate it as kind of like a Can we try it? Willy Wonka golden ticket situation. This is just their chocolate. It doesn't have cannabis in Let's it. Let's try their chocolate. All right. Let's I'll I'll open it very mayonnaise slowly. Filled. Mayonnaise filled. <laughs> mayonnaise. Wait, really? Wow. Mayonnaise wonder, filled chocolate? Would you try mayonnaise with chocolate? I will try anything with mayonnaise or chocolate or together. Mm. Absolutely. No, no, a line of gourmet chocolates filled with mayonnaise sounds Interesting. I'm going to give it a shot. It's good. This is good chocolate. Yeah, it's really nice. Not too sweet. Mm -hmm. Not overly white sugary. It's high quality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Well, congrats. Milk's really nice. Nice job, Zen. Zen. Um, and thanks for sending us over all of this information. We'll keep an eye out for it on 420 as we run around LA and do a bunch of stuff. Yeah. We're going to be mm. having a great high holiday. I'm so excited for all the stuff we have going on. For anyone listening, if you want to check out our show... We've got a show on 420, Weed and Grub Live, 930 at the Ice House in Pasadena. We've got a couple of great guests booked and um, we've got giveaways and we're just going to have a fantastic time and I'll get you a sitter, Mr. Moo. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. So we can stay home. And on 419, I'm doing my show at the Comedy Store, 1030 at night whoop, that, whoop. that Thursday um, to ring in 420. The Comedy Store hit me up and they were like, do you want to ring in 420 and do like a little midnight weed fueled yeah. celebration? I was like, there's nowhere I'd rather be and there's nothing I'd rather celebrate more than doing some comedy, ringing in 420 yeah, and uh, being like, around buds. It kind of does feel like New Year's. It'll be so fun to spark one at midnight with you and like lean into that whole day. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Don't you think on days like 420, Uber and Lyft should... Instead of having price increases, should have price decreases so everywhere can get everywhere safely. Yeah. Wouldn't that be so much better? That would be so nice. Yeah. And then they should also release something like bicycle. Uh, what are those things that people ride around in China in the back of a bike? 
a rickshaw. rickshaw. Don't you think there should be like, I would love like 420 rickshaws to go around in oh, LA. Yeah. That would be so dope. Also 419, the day of your show is Bicycle Day, which is the celebration of uh, Albert Hoffman discovering LSD. And he took that bicycle ride home from his lab and tripped balls. That's right. So it's that double, the double days, 419 and 420. It's an excellent pair of days celebrating uh, consciousness expansion. So if you come to my 419 show at the Comedy Store, I will be handing out acid to every <laughs> single every person. Dog. <laughs> Every single dog. You bring your dog, I'm giving you acid. That's <laughs> I'm joking because God doesn't want me to say that. <laughs> Don't say it. Um, awesome. I'm so excited. God just choked me out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hilarious. Um, um, that's cool. Awesome. We also have some uh, cool, speaking of 420 and things moving in the fun, correct, direct, mm -hmm. uh, we have a pretty sweet news story this week, which is... Um, heartening compared to oh, how yeah. i've been feeling about weed lately are we at the news store we also have the letters from friends um oh. that we were gonna read as well oh let's do letters first want to do letters first yeah, and then news? i mean my tangent rocked it was pretty freaking good <laughs> but let's do some uh here let's foreshadow the rest of the app we're gonna do letters from people who wrote to us mm -hmm. we're gonna do a news story we're gonna do contest winners yep shout out ed shout out king fisher and then buds of the week and then buds of the week and then um and probably some riffing about mayonnaise between now and the end. I have a couple callbacks I'd like to make cool. if they fit. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm thinking down. of them. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, I wanted to read a letter from Ryan who wrote in to say, um, new listener. Hey guys, I just wanted to send a message and say hi, LOL. I'm starting from the beginning and listening to the podcast. I truly love it. I listen to it while I stock shelves. I just listen to you guys and the tender friends and you guys talk about how all good things come in buckets. And I literally laughed out loud around people because I thought about your lube that you had in your nightstand that you said was in a bucket. <laughs> I don't remember that. That's a bucket of lube. A bucket of lube. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I am hoping that I catch up to the new episodes eventually. Thanks for bringing a smile to my face and knowledge to my brain. Love one stoner to another. Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. That is so awesome. Starting at the beginning, I mean, that's five years worth of episodes that you have to catch up on. So much rambling. And no, uh, not one mistake. Never a mistake. Zero. Perfect Always perfect. Perfect comedy, entertainment, and education at all times. I can't. I, I would love to go back and listen to some of those old ones when we were truly like recording for a really long time and then like really heavy edits as opposed to now where we're like, let's hang out for an hour, shoot the breeze, do no edit drop if possible, you know. It's just, it's, it's a fun evolution. So I'm glad that Ryan is like going all the way back, checking it out. I remember we had some like very fun debates, very spicy um, arguments. Yes. Um, yeah. And a good time. He is also, he is also correct that we are correct. Everything that comes in a bucket is fun. That's right. Lube, popcorn. Chicken. Chicken. Yep. Um, uh, what's, what's the seafood thing in a bucket? Seafood thing oh, in a bucket. Oh, the boil. A seafood oh, boil. Yep. Yeah, bucket of crabs. Bucket of crabs. Mm -hmm. bucket uh, hole in a bucket, like a glory hole. Popcorn, yep. I said popcorn. Hole hole in a bucket? What are you talking about? Like, you know, if there's a hole in a bucket, mm -hmm. I mean, like, a like a glory hole? What? I do not know what you're talking about. What is a hole in a bucket of popcorn like a glory hole? Like when you cut a hole in a bucket of popcorn. Mm -hmm. This doesn't, re this isn't ringing a bell from one of our first episodes, the popcorn trick. I know the buttering popcorn with a straw trick, but what are you talking about cutting a hole in the bucket of popcorn trick? I feel like because you didn't go, you went to high school in Canada, right? Correct. Okay. I, maybe this is like, because we've, we've talked before about how in America, certain things just kind of hit every single generation of high schoolers. Sure. Like certain jokes, certain running jokes, every mm -hmm. single generation thinks they're the first one to hear it, but it's like somehow it just, it's the same shit, different day. Okay. And the popcorn trick, which is where you cut a hole in the bottom of the bucket of popcorn, you put your dick in it. That way, when your date reaches into the popcorn to grab the popcorn, mm -hmm. they feel your erect schlong uh -huh. and go, oh man, I'm so glad I'm feeling that. And then you get a um, buttery hand job in the theater while watching the new Transformers. That's the dream, huh? That's, well, I, I think, don't know about I that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I just think the reality of that would be like, you stick your dick into a bucket of popcorn. It takes her a while to like eat enough popcorn to get down to it, by which time you have lost your boner. And then she just gets a handful of like flaccid, greasy, salty dong. And then everyone's oh. embarrassed. And then the date is over. Is over, yeah. <laughs> and then you're just like sliding your dick out of a popcorn bucket. And then and you get arrested. <laughs> So that's how that goes. <laughs> Wait, you do make me want to do some quick math. 
Oh, because great. I just watched a video where um, a bunch of dudes not knowing each other's uh, wiener sizes put themselves in order from biggest to shortest wiener. Who me- who measured? Um, they revealed at the end. Okay. It, but the guys all talked and worked it out together it was like to self-reported. see. Self-reported. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And it was, and so I know what the average U.S. male hard shaft is right now. Whoa. Um, how tall do you think a bucket of popcorn is? Like how, how big is the bucket inch wise? Uh, it's 10 inches. 10 inches, right? Yeah. Agreed. Mm-hmm. And then with that layer of popcorn on top, will we add another like half inch? of Another of, two inches. I'd say like a total foot tall, big bucket of foot popcorn. Foot tall. Mm-hmm. Okay. The average erect male wiener is 5.2 inches. Yes. So you're absolutely right. For the trick to work, you would have to eat over six inches of popcorn just to reach so the fast. tip. Yeah, so just, fast. Just to get to your, yeah. Yeah. Just before you reach that moment of um, sexual horror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the math doesn't work out at all. Your erection is not going to last that long. That's also, also just, true. It's just a terrible idea on every level. But um, <laughs> and thanks for the refresher. I had forgotten about that. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> so glad you're listening. We're so stoked to have new listeners and keep growing e as we, as we go. See, this is my kind of science. Mm-hmm. I don't mean like sexual assault science. I mean like if you were to like I'm good at math when the popcorn trick is involved. Sure. It, it, when when we're talking about like Roman numerals or whatever. Yeah, math. I remember early on you you calculated how much cum it would take to fill an Olympic sized swimming pool, and I did it fast. I, it was disgusting. Well, we had Taylor help us. Remember? Uh, yes. Yeah, it was. Well, anyway, but, we don't need to revisit that. <laughs> Sorry, I, saying, I brought it up. <laughs> like, we, if if like if there was like OnlyFans High School, right? I think I would actually like retain a lot of information, historical, yes. mathematical, scientific. Mm-hmm. I would be able to retain it all. Scientific, especially scientific. Mm-hmm. I want to read a letter too. Okay. Well, actually, it's a review. Can we go over to it, Mark? Because I want people to leave reviews for our podcast. Um, thank you for leaving this Allie who proposed to her now fiance oh at sf sketch fest at sf sketch fest Our shout out Allie. Allie. hi who's globe trotting the world right now as yes. well yes all over the place her instagram is super fun really cool to see so she wrote us a review on itunes leave us five stars on itunes leave us five stars on spotify it helps write a review mm-hmm. burt kreischer we almost beat you this week <laughs> we are so close to overtaking your spot in the top comedy podcasts in america coming for you Allie wrote, first of all, yes, MJ, you're definitely strong enough to break a banana in half. Second of all, I really relate to Mike's cutting board and spoon strategy. Growing up in a household that was constantly overwhelming and hectic, we often didn't have many clean dishes. So I tried to create as little dirty dish as possible. That is exactly why I use the peel as a cutting board and the same spoon as my cereal to scoop slices of banana from the peel onto my bowl of cereal. However... I also use MJ's banana monkey peeling style. Often I will forget about it and start to peel the banana from the stem end, but many times instead of peeling the banana, it just starts to split and then the peel splits in a strange way and mushes the banana at the tip. When this happens, I flip my banana over and split monkey style. Wild. I mean, it is so bizarre to me to learn that so many people do this, break it in half and use the cutting peel as a cutting board situation. My brother left me a voicemail today saying, I, I'm listening to last week's up about banana and I do the exact same thing, break it in half cutting board style. Glazer family tradition. Ali Glazer, universal. More people do it than do whatever you do. <laughs> okay. Well, I had never heard of it. I've made it into my 40s without ever having heard of this. And it's just blowing my mind. Uh, that's great. I will try and adapt. I will, I will try it out for myself. I've never done the monkey peeling style that you described mm-hmm. yet. I have always encountered the mushy tip when I peel <laughs> from the stem. More mushy tip talk. More mushy tip talk. Uh-huh. So Allie bringing up the mushy tip talk mm-hmm. is completely relatable and gets me excited to try the monkey peel end because that mushy tip, especially when it gets like a little bit brown and gummy and yeah. I never want to put that in my mouth. It's always a bummer and I always do eat it, but I don't want to. I want I want um I want banana as it should be. Yeah. So mushy tip is a great place to avoid if you're a stem opener. Yes, it yeah. is. <laughs> would you try the cutting using the peel as a cutting board method? I just said I would. Well, you're making smoothies every morning with banana. I am making smoothies. I was given a magic bullet blender recently as a gift by my brother-in-law and it's 
changed my life. I am making um, my own almond milk. I got to bring it up again because I'm virtue signaling. Um, I am using a, like homemade almond milk, bananas, and frozen fruit and just zizzing it up every morning. And it's like so great. And I'm feeling really good in the mornings. Like I, I was for a while there kind of like doing eggs with a piece of toast. And I thought that that was pretty good, a little protein start. But no, it turns out my body actually wants fruit and almond milk. That sounds Great. really nice. Yeah, and then I'm eating a sandwich every fucking day, so <laughs> for my sandwich series. So uh, it's that good you to, just cracked a thousand pivot. followers on. Thank you. Yes, I did. Congratulations. Thank you so much. First a- month, a couple things go viral. 100k yeah. plus views, and you cracked a thousand followers starting from scratch. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been really fun. I've had a couple of ones that were like, obviously, you know, they were intended to be provocative. I knew that making a sandwich about pussy, pussy grabbing was going to, um, you know, get the bros to come out. And sure enough, they're showing up in full force and they are pissed. Good. So, yeah, that's fun. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow, the, the sandwich, by the time this comes out, the sandwich that will have dropped yesterday is uh, Andrew Tate Dan Bilzerian sandwich. <laughs> wow. Awesome. Archie, what are you doing? <laughs> Crazy lunatic. Cool. And you're like for both of them. Oh yeah, it's it's a pro Andrew Tate and Dan Bilzerian that kind of guy sandwich. Cool, it's and like, it's yes, and it's women. like a dick in the middle of a. It's <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a it's a it's a chicken Caesar wrap, and it's just about how you shouldn't ever trust a man who doesn't have art on his walls. Because I just saw a video of Andrew Tate, who's I guess now out of Romanian prison on home arrest, and he was like pacing around in a bunker smoking a cigar shirtless, and he just looked like a lunatic. And I was like, oh, he thinks this is hot. All I could see is that there's no art on the walls. And I was thinking about when we went to Dan Bilzerian's Bel Air compound, and he also had no art on the walls. And I was like, of course these dudes are terrible to women. Of course they're terrible to women because they haven't fed their souls. They're fucking starved souls. They're like, yeah. Yeah. Lunatics. No amount of money and ejaculation and, is muscles. Go- and muscles is going to Mm-mm. fulfill that. No, they're bottomless pits of need. So I can't wait to eat, see that sandwich. Yeah, I will make you the sandwich to eat as well if you like. It was delicious. It's the mayo for me. Uh, yes. <laughs> I knew it would come back. Promo spot. At <laughs> it's the mayo for me on all platforms. Um, when you're making these morning smoothies, have you tried Allie and I's banana trick yet? Uh, not yet because I just, although I will tomorrow, I will break the banana in half and I will give it a shot. Okay. Yeah. Would love to see it. Okay. <laughs> I'll get video proof and I'll text it over to you just so you know. Cool. Because I, I forgot to put the um, Instagram votey thing on our story. Oh. So I have a lot of work to do for this podcast. I have to pull the banana clip. I have to put up a little vote for how you peel your banana. Oh, that's I, right. I, I dropped the ball. Um, well, you were recording recently. your comedy specials. So I mean, was... it was standing room only two shows and I'm pretty proud of it. So, you know, it was best case in every way. Like it was so packed. There were a few people who couldn't get in, which is a shame. But otherwise, I felt like every aspect of that night was just so fabulous. I'm you that sorry i hope you felt it as well i do feel it um i am going to take a little bit of space to shout out producer mark who became director mark who absolutely shot the shit out of my special with Mm -hmm. his crew um i can't wait to dive into the edit and see where this all goes but the shows were incredible mark brought the heat you saved the day i cannot thank you enough so i must also thank you on pod the way that i thought i thanked you off pod for everything you did including second show end of show surprising me on stage with a birthday cake (laughs) where the entire crowd sang happy birthday and i got to make a wish with friends family strangers folks Mm -hmm. uh thank you so much to everyone who came out thank you mary jane so much for carrying such a heavy load and dealing with my neuroses um, when I would get stressed out about it. It was a blast. And uh, yeah. It was such a good time. So congratulations. I can't wait to see the finished product. You know? I can't either. Buy it on all platforms, streaming everywhere, sold to Comedy Central. Yeah, I think we're going to give that a go. Yeah. We're certainly going to make the best edit we can and then see if it can live anywhere. Fantastic. Yeah. So hopefully it will. Um, Sweet. It's also the kind of thing where... If I the very next night I had no material because my job is to start from scratch and have nothing and I was hosting an entire show so I just went up there and I was like I'm gonna do a great job hosting I'm gonna bring these people up but I have nothing and I just like 10 minutes of new premises I've been excited to be exploring that I haven't explored yet and it felt so good I feel so excited about comedy again because I'm I'm starting good. from nothing and that feels great. Oh, gosh. That's just wonderful. That's so good to hear. Yeah. Gosh. Golly gee. Golly gee. <laughs> Talked about whale blowholes. Whoa. All right. You know, really hard hitting commentary. Put some mayo in there. Oh, seal it up. <laughs> Should I do mayonnaise <laughs> comedy this time around? 
<laughs> we'll see. I'm certainly passionate enough about it. I'm so excited. Um, well, Is this a good spot for our news story? Oh, fuck. We forgot about that. Yeah, let's do our news story real okay. quick. Okay. Um, Grublet Gazette this week is a great news story, uh, coming to you from marijuanamoment.net. It is that the Illinois Senate has passed a bill to block police from searching cars based on, uh, marijuana smell, which is fantastic. So they approved legislation that would prevent the smell of marijuana from being used as probable cause to search a vehicle or its passengers. The Senate voted 33 to 20 on Thursday to pass the bill, and it's now set to be considered by the House's uh, the state's House of Representatives. Um, the bill sponsors Senate Senator Rachel Ventura said in a statement that the proposal would protect Illinoisians. Is that what they're called? Illinoisians rights against unreasonable searches. Uh, she said people, especially people of color, are unnecessarily pulled over far too often. The odor of cannabis alone shouldn't be one of those reasons. Cannabis is legal in Illinois and it is a pungent scent that can stick to clothes for extended periods of time. Um, so she knows what's up. And I'm so glad that that has been uh, pushed through and passed. And hopefully the House of Representatives will sign off on it real quick. And that'll be law, which will be fantastic. Such a big deal, especially when um, I'm still learning how to use my rights in yes. a way that like allows me to stand up for myself in situations where a cop is pulling me over and trying to squeeze as much juice out of that interaction as they possibly can. Right. And I know that smell has led to suspicion, which leads to probable cause, which leads to a canine unit coming out, which leads well, to yeah, a so search. The, like it gets hairy quickly. The bill, this bill was a response to a Will County court case in which a defendant was pulled over and arrested after the officer detected, quote, a strong odor of burnt cannabis. And the defendant said someone had smoked cannabis in the car a long time ago. And they were like, this is not valid for being able to pull someone over and search and then arrest them. Yeah. It's it's massive too because I I mean if I was that guy I would have said I I no. Like I wouldn't have but given anything. You can't anything. Just say no. Well, I would have been like lawyer, first amendment, oh, yeah, fifth amendment, fourth amendment. Like I would just start yelling different numbered amendments until I land okay. on the right one. Great. And then I'd be like lawyer, I've seen SVU. None of them ask for it, all of them should. Like, <laughs> you know, but it, but genuinely, I I've, I've been pulled over enough times and been very scared enough times to know that like it, any kind of suspicion can lead to them, you know, yeah. um, getting getting more out of a traffic stop than they should legally be allowed to. Yes. So, man, don't ad admit to anything. Always say no and always ask, am I being detained? And I'd like to see a supervisor because they will and record yourself. And Yeah, I was just going to say and throw on that camera. Yep. You know, there's so much now that we are seeing and catching because of cameras that historically uh, cops were just getting away with. So, yeah, put them on blast. Absolutely. I don't know how your algorithms are, but every so often, like especially with a news story like this coming out, out of Illinois, I will watch um, cop pulls over, gets eviscerated kind mm. of TikToks and reels. Mm -hmm. And some of them I'm suspicious of because I'm like, I feel like you were doing a lot to get pulled over to then make an example out of this cop. Like there's, there are sometimes I'm like, I think you're just being an asshole for no reason to this mm -hmm. officer. Mm -hmm. But there are other times when that officer is really pushing the limits of the law yeah. and acting like if you don't know what those limits are, then I'm going to get away with a lot. It's crazy. And um, there, I'm learning. Me I'm think learning. Too, there's a, I don't know if you follow, um, there's a dude, I think his handle is Tizzy Ent. And he, you know, just posts videos of people doing shitty things and calls them out and is like, you know, find out who they are. Let's like, let's unmask this terrible racist or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he was just posting a story um, about a woman who was being harassed by her ex who was a cop. And he kept like breaking into her home and then she would call the cops and they would show up and they would always take his side even though she had video like at one point he had broken into her house by squeezing through a window the day before and then she came home another day and found him called the cops and then he when the cops came he showed his bruises and he was like she hit me she hit me and she was like that's from crawling in the window yesterday you absolute fucking nightmare so finally she got everything on video and they had to take her um word for it because she had video proof that this guy was actually being um scary and abusive but um yeah the cops were just totally like taking his side and it was just so crazy yeah i there were a couple <sighs> times that something like this like i've been very fortunate i remember one time i went through tsa without remembering that i had a little metal dugout in my mm -hmm. carry-on oh yeah and then i'm going through my stuff to get my charger while i'm waiting in the uh, terminal and i see it and i'm like my heart stopped because yeah. had I known it was in there, I truly would have just thrown it away as mm -hmm. opposed to throwing caution to the wind. Um, but then when we flew back from Alaska, 
um, because they were so generous and I had just had all that loose bud in my pocket. Oh yeah, I had that's all right. Those you were stinky. stinky. <laughs> I was sticky and stinky mm -hmm. and I had just had like crystals and leaves and stuff all yeah, over my pocket. Yeah, remember the inside pockets. of your pocket looked like a freshly mown lawn. It was yeah. just like, and it was, it was not even any bud in there. It was just like the remnants of having put it in, yeah, tucked it away. Exactly. So a law wow. like this in Illinois, I hope that it goes to other um, legal states so that we can we we can we can have um we can have, we can have a little bit of fair fairness when it comes to we like agree. yeah 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 like if I'm allowed to smoke a joint on the streets of New York you should be allowed to like have your car smell weird but not be driving under the influence don't drive under the influence yeah and this this law specifically would not affect um things around impaired driving like obviously don't don't get super fucked up and drive please um we have our contest winners to get to yeah Kingfisher syrup. Thank you, Ed. Uh, check out Kingfisher Syrup. We will post a link to Kingfisher in the show notes. Um, Ed is making fantastic, delicious infused syrups in uh, three flavors right now. And we ran a contest on our Instagram. We asked for you all to write in and say what you would use uh, any of the blueberry, honey, or ginger syrups to make. And we said we would pick some winners. So um, I'd like to pick one first. Okay. Okay. Uh, I should also say, if you're listening to this app and maybe we put the time code in for this part mm -hmm. in, in our IG, message us. We will connect you with King Fisher. Yes. And then King Fisher will get your address. And figure out how, and to, get figure out how to get you your stuff. Yes. Okay. So that first person, J.Warner. J.Warner said, I would make a big pitcher of sparkling ginger lemonade to share with friends on a nice spring day. Nice. Congratulations, Jade. Our first winner. Our second winner is You're So Licious, uh, Marvin, who wrote, I'd use the ginger syrup to make a teriyaki glaze for some grilled chicken thighs. The honey syrup would be perfect for a buttery baklava with pecans, cinnamon, and walnuts. And finally, I would use the pineapple in a mocktail with some orange juice, Sprite, and kava kava extract. I think the sweetness and brightness... Wow, he wrote a whole dissertation on this. I think the I think sweetness... you have a new co-host. I am <laughs> out of here. The sweetness and brightness of the pineapple would pair well with the tingly, peppery flavor of the kava kava as an aperitif. As an after-dinner cocktail, it would synergize with the cannabis to create a very relaxed experience to get you to that rest and digest state marvin Whew. wow well kingfisher syrup is coming your way yeah so is this cold sweat that i just <laughs> broke into my god who else we got uh the other one was philip matthew cloacy mm -hmm. who i'd like to shout out because it said i'd make some honey walnut shrimp with a honey syrup definitely some waffles with the blueberry and probably some garlic salmon with the ginger lovely love that because it's the idea of like, we could all make these craft cocktails and mocktails, but like making some kind of honey walnut shrimp with the honey kingfisher syrup yeah. makes so much sense. It's so versatile that I just loved that answer. Sweet and savory. I love that garlic, salmon, ginger idea. Mm -hmm. And make sure you take the poop trail out. That's what first episode of Top Chef, that guy got eliminated for keeping the poop trails in his shrimp. So poop trail. Oh, the yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Philip, when you make that honey walnut shrimp, devein it. Devein it. Devein. <laughs> I was like poop trail. Let's call it what it is. It's not a vein. It's yeah. It's an intestine. It's an intestinal tract that's full of poop. Yes. Um. <laughs> congrats, Philip. Uh, next up, <laughs> we have Tiffany. Uh, Tiffany M Y C L one, who said I'd start my day with the honey simple syrup mixed in my bulletproof coffee and shamelessly probably a squirt straight down the gullet as the cherry on top. Ooh. Ooh my kind of answer. Uh, Tiffany King. Fisher syrup is coming your way. And we've got one more. Two more. One more. What? Yeah, we did Jade, You're So Licious, Tiffany, and Philip. Oh, then Sabrina Spears. Yeah. Mocktails and barbecue sauces. Yep. Shout All out Sabrina. Day. King the, Fisher coming your way. The first infused barbecue sauce I've ever had was in Alaska with a stony moose in Ketchikan a couple weeks ago. I'm mm -hmm. still reeling from it. So the fact that Sabrina, who's also in Alaska and Anchorage, and Sabrina, I know we follow each other on Instagram. I'm just going to also say congrats on moving into your new place. I know you've been working very hard to find a place to call your own. So hopefully these uh, infused syrups are also a beautiful housewarming from Kingfisher. And I can't wait to hear all about the barbecue sauces you make with them. Lovely. Yeah. 
Um, well, that wraps our contest. And that also brings us to Buds of the Week and the end of this very special episode of Weed and Grub because it's my birthday and I got to go. Okay. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mary Jane. Thank you, Mike. I mean, last week, my Bud of the Week was me. Do you and my be... Bud of the Week was also you. Yeah. So <laughs> do you want to do that for your birthday? No, it's fine. <laughs> You're so much better than me. My Bud of the Week this week is me again. Uh, it's been a really nice week. <laughs> I kind of feel like I'm crushing it right now, which is nice. Wow. So I'm going to uh, just shout me out uh, again. No, I'm just kidding. I have an I have a really special bud this week, actually. Um, I'm gonna pull them up right here. Mountain Air Cannabis, uh, Donnie and Jen. Uh, I don't know how much I can say on pod versus like I want to do some peek behind the curtain about these people, but I also don't want to say too much because of how special they are and how you should follow their Instagram, Mountain Air Cannabis. Mm -hmm. What I will say is Donnie came to my comedy store show. We hit it off. He was very generous with gifts for that comedy store show. Um, he and Jen, who I'd heard a lot about but hadn't met until my taping, were equally, doubly, and triply generous um, for everyone at my taping. And the cannabis is fire. The other things are fire. They're generous, great people. And another time, I was just walking down the street. I was walking down uh, Hollywood Boulevard, and I run into Donnie at like one in the morning, and he's just like on the street with a bunch of homies. And I was like, oh my gosh. So like this kismet, energy of us keep running into each other um him supporting um what i'm trying to do means the world jen is one of the sweetest people they came to both tapings yeah and um i could go on and on but i i just would ask everyone please follow mountain air cannabis and um if they are the kind of people that you are interested in great stuff great folks and uh i can't thank them enough for coming into my life wonderful yeah they are great buds. Uh, it was so nice to hang with them a little bit at your show. Um, my bud of the week is Laura Ann from Laura Ann's Jams. Laura Ann was a guest on our podcast a while back. She is a famous jam maker here in Los Angeles. Her jams were uh, featured by Oprah. She was the answer to a Jeopardy question once. And she's so cool. She makes the most beautiful artisanal uh, small batch craft jams, like small batch craft cannabis. And they're and delicious. And she sent me a package of jams and a homemade nut butter because of the sandwich series. And she was like, I just want to like supply you with some stuff to make yummy sandwiches with. And it was so generous and lovely. And she's just so freaking cool. And, uh, you know, local jam maker. So check her out at Laura Ann's Jam. She ships nationwide, maybe internationally. I don't even know, but she's got this crazy, my favorite of hers is the rock and jalapeno. Um, which you can use with sweet or savory. She's got a strawberry Syrah that's killer. She makes marmalades. There's a blueberry basil jam. Like there's all kinds of stuff. And she does like little sampler packages and it's a fantastic gift. Like, you know, Mother's Day is coming up. Go go check her out and um, send, and it, send your mom it's some jam. It's picnic season. It's fucking picnic season. Yeah. Maybe that's what I want to do for my birthday is have a picnic. A little picnic? Yeah. What are you, you eating? <laughs> Chocolate? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. It just looked to me like you picked something up like off your jeans and put it in your mouth. Oh, I've done that too. I didn't actually see you like get that from anywhere. It was just like a random piece of food. <laughs> I know we're at the end, but can I tell you something gross that I told my therapist the other day? Sure. I, oh God. We can't drag it out. We're at the end, Mike. We got to wrap it up. Come on. <laughs> I believe that if you eat your scabs, it helps with regeneration and builds power inside of you. And I've eaten my scabs my whole life because I truly believe that there are certain properties inside of that healing of the cells that makes the scab, mm -hmm. that by eating that, it gets reabsorbed into you. Therefore, you become stronger longer and you have rejuvenation effects through embracing the rejuvenation parts of you in like this recyclical mm. style and thought. That sounds like something that you like animal kingdom style you know like that sounds very sort of like primal kind of yeah um yeah i mean i don't necessarily disagree i um also know that is why you like raw mushrooms in your salads because you like weird textures <laughs> <laughs> oh are these scabs can i have extra scabs in yeah. my seas <laughs> extra scabs delicious i was just listening to a woman who um studies pus and she was like, pus is like the coolest thing in the world. Like if you really know about like how it works and what it does, it's like kind of a magical, incredible thing. Oh, I'd love to learn more about that. Yeah. Maybe next week. What a delicious wrap up to this episode. I mean, we started, we started, this is a horny. A lot of mayonnaise talk. Yeah. A lot of cream based oh talk Oh my God, we got to go. <laughs> 
Thank you, Mike. This has been fun. Mary Jane, the happiest of birthdays to you. Um, you. Everyone listening to this episode, slide into Mary Jane's DMs. Ooh. Say happy birthday. Send her a big fat whisk pic. Yes, please. And um, have beautiful weeks, everyone. And we'll talk to you in uh, seven days. See you next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.